Uh, so look, the 1967 lines, Obama said, you know, that's a, he said that's where it should start, and that's never been Israel's position. I mean, he came out against Israel's position. Okay, so he doesn't embrace everything that another, Correct. That, that another nation state says. So you're you mad at the president of the United States because he's not locked, he's not in Correct. lockstep. Correct. There should be no well, distance you know between our... Well, you know what? I actually think that the United States, sometimes we will agree with Israel and sometimes we won't. But it's not a 50-second state. Well, then we state. disagree on that. It's not the 50-second you know, state. Both of, both, you know, both candidates, first, both right? Obama and uh, Romney have not been doing the best when it comes to the Arab-Israeli conflict. I mean, we have um, the Israeli building settlement uh, spawn settlements in Palestine, uh, in, in the West Bank, and, that, and that's not helping at all of the two-state solution, which this United States government uh, supports. On top of that, uh, Mitt Romney, for example, in his last chunk it to uh, the Middle East and to Jerusalem, it, it, it incredibly just completely um, ostracized and alienated the entire Palestinian population by saying that the GDP disparity between the Israelis and the Palestinians is, is, is not because of, uh, um, of 50 years of occupation, but rather because of cultural differences. So I don't see, it's like um, Andy said, there, there is no uh, platform behind Mitt Romney. I mean, he's just pouring out sentiments here. So. I, I just see uh, Obama as a lesser of two evils, right. and um, i also like to get your okay. opinion on this, Andy. Well, we get it. Look, what you're thinking is very dangerous, because you say, oh, well, the Israelis are building settlements. Back in 2000 with Arafat, they were offered a peace deal. There was going to be a sharing of East Jerusalem, and they didn't want to take it. And what was their answer? It's violence. It's blowing up women and children in buses. I mean, the Israelis don't do that. The I Israelis don't, don't target civilians. He's not defending terrorism. He's not defending terrorism. He was saying that the and Israelis right. are building I'm settlements. Sorry. And, and to your point... There are 50 states. I meant to That's say okay. Israel's no, not the 50 We didn't need that correction. State. I know you knew that. I meant okay. to say Israel's not the 50 states. You're okay. You're okay. I want to go back over to David. Never know with you guys. David has, Take a, low blows. David has a comment. Larry, interestingly, a lot of people on uh, Twitter tonight weighing in on the gay rights issue and yeah, how, we're the, get to that now. how the Republicans deal with it. Lori tweeting, Condi Rice just called education equality, quote, civil rights issue of our time. Um, I know some LGBT folks who would beg to differ. Also weighing in tonight, Veracity Stu saying, looks like Mike Huckabee has been supporting Chick-fil-A a little too much. Slow down there, partner. Continuing down, thank you at Governor Huckabee for giving a shout out to the unborn, of course, dealing with the issue of abortion. And again, so many people weighing in on Condoleezza Rice tonight. Condi Rice was wonderful in her speech. Since you mentioned gay rights, we are now going to go via Google Plus to Michael Carr. Michael is a gay Republican, openly gay. He's running for the state Senate in Colorado. The obvious, Michael, why are you Republican? Well, I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, I, I believe in the principles of smaller, more limited government. I think that government has obviously a role in making sure that rules are followed and, and that qualities are pr protected. But I think that the government's been overreaching in, in regards to the, the uh, the gay rights movement. All right, what about the platform, though, which opposes same-sex marriage? Romney and Ryan both agree with that stance. Now, they did invite log cabin Republicans, that's gay Republicans, to take part in the platform committee meetings, but obviously they didn't get much headway, I guess. What about that plank, Michael? Sure, I mean, so the platform doesn't mean anything to anybody. So there's been no Republican that's run on the platform as a purity standard. In but a, Romney in has Iraq. endorsed that plat that part of the platform he has endorsed. Sure, I mean, he's, um, he's endorsed that platform. And, and there's, I would love, love, love to challenge a Democrat that supports every part of the Democratic platform. And, you know, what, what really comes down to is the fact that law cabiners like myself are a voice for change in the Republican Party. And we're moving the party closer to the, you know, the, the middle stance. Now, the platform also supports the reinstatement of uh, don't ask, don't tell for openly gay individuals in the military. You support that? Absolutely not. I, I think that Log Cabin especially uh, has, has advanced that issue to an extent that it, it's unrealistic for any Republican to support the, the repeal of the repeal of don't ask, don't tell. All right, you said you, you look at yourself as a force for change. Absolutely. Do you, do you, do you see, do you have any optimism, optimistic code for that? Do you see anything on the horizon that tells you that your party will change vis-a-vis -vis gay Americans? Absolutely. I mean, the, the sheer fact that log cabin Republicans have been involved in the platform process, 
is is new. The, the sheer fact that log cabin Republicans were were credentialed by the RNC this election cycle uh, suggests that we are reforming the Republican Party. You know, we don't have to believe with the Republican Party on every, you know, point in the platform. The fact of the matter is, is that the Republican Party understands that the demographics are changing, and they're they're changing in the gay and lesbian community's favor. And and this election cycle, not only were we invited to participate in the platform committee, we're fully credentialed by the RNC. We're not only uh, asked to be part of the RNC, but we're expected to be part of the, the convention. And I think that's a, that's a huge, huge point. Uh, and and it, it demonstrates how the party is changing. Michael, by the way, his opponent is an openly gay Democrat, so that might be a wash in the campaign. Uh, why wasn't a log cabin person, maybe you or someone, invited to speak at the convention? Oh, I, I have no idea. I mean. There, there's so many people that are, you know, so important that, uh, you know, I, maybe if I were running for governor, they would have they would have asked me <laughs> to speak. But, you know, I, this is a state race and uh, law cabin is very involved in a lot of races. And, uh, you know, we, we can't All be right. expected to be at every point, you know, every every point. I understand. In the, uh, right, you're on the board of the log cabin. Uh, the log cabins did not endorse Bush in 2004. They endorsed sure. McCain in 2008. Are the log cabin uh, Republicans going to endorse Romney? You know, we're, we're going to be talking about the endorsement uh, in September at our national board meeting. Um, you know, we, we'd love to endorse the, the candidate for, for president on the, the Republican side. There's a lot of issues that we have to weigh. Um, you know, we're, we're, there's a lot of diverse opinion as to how we should vote. You know, we're, we're looking at a very uh, interesting debate in September. How will you vote? I mean, I think that the, the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of us, you know, uh, as log cabiners, will vote for Mitt Romney. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that there's a lot of things to weigh as a gay rights slash Republican organization. Um, so I'll, I'll be voting for the president. Uh, I mean, I'll be I'll be voting for Mitt Romney for president. Right. But thank you, know. you, thank you very much, Michael Carr, gay Republican running for the state senate in Colorado. Andy, is this a how do the conservative how do you view this issue? Sure. Well, what's interesting about this issue, if you, I, I think it's a. Um, you got to look at the media side of it. And that Barack Obama was a civil union guy. I mean, the main issue we're talking about is whether it's civil unions or gay marriage. Nobody is for discrimination. I mean, that's just the idea that conservatives are for discriminating against people is insane. Do all conservatives support civil unions? Well, all, they so, do? some do, some don't. But so civil unions and marriage. Barack Obama was a civil union guy, and then all of a sudden, right before the election, he evolved into a gay marriage guy. As What's Romney interesting, has evolved. But, right. So when when Obama became a gay marriage guy, he evolved, and it became an enlightened moment. But when Romney makes a different decision on abortion to change his mind, he's a flip-flopper and he's switching sides. It's, it's just interesting how the media will cover such an event. Do you think the Republicans will change regarding the gay issues as I Mr. think 20, Carr 20, 30 years from now, I think our generation, remember there's the Mike Huckabee generation, which is all of our crazy uncle in the sweater vest who's <laughs> drunk at the party. You know, I don't identify Huckabee, I don't identify with, but I think the next generation the, these social issues are not going to be as important as the economic issues. Is this issues. a plus or a minus for the Democrats? I think that, look, Larry, politically it's a plus, but I am actually glad that there are log cabin Republicans. I look forward to the day when there's not a major political party in the United States embracing a platform of discrimination. I would love for Democrats and Republicans to be having conversations about how do we rebuild an economy? How do we uh, make the nation greater? What's the next big thing we should get behind? And not as, and again, you know, with all due respect to Andy, there are plenty of conservatives who are against uh, civil unions. There are conservatives who are saying that gay people should have their children taken yeah, away but, from them. You're talking so about the extremes. That, that according to that same logic, I could say, well, there are plenty of liberals who are caring members of the Communist Party, like no, Obama's not. mentor. Frank Marshall Davis. You, okay, you know what? 
this is again another false soundbite. If you wanted well, to, why is that a false out, soundbite? No, no. So let's do this, and we don't have to do it right now. But you like talk to me, and I will email you tomorrow. You Absolutely. email me. You tell me all of the card carrying sure. communist members. B Bill Ayers. Democrat, oh, wait a second, yeah. and then I will email you about who all of the conservatives are. Who I'm just said, my who argument is said, ridiculous. I'm, said, I'm admitting I'm ridiculous. We don't believe in civil You're rights. You're missing the point. People. I wasn't making. I was saying how ridiculous my argument would be. He has criticized yeah. the Huckabees and that right. element. I was saying Saying that the fringe to criticize also, the fringe. I'm saying that I'm criticizing your fringe. fringe. My, fair they're, enough. They're, they're both indefensible. You're making my argument for me. No, I'm not, because you're suggesting Neither that of the you're fringes fringe. are defensible. You know what? But your fringe is not a fringe. If your fringe were a fringe, then the birther then, movement's a fringe. You're a fringe. Then why is then why is Mitt Romney pandering to them? If they're what such a fringe, why is he pandering to them? How is Mitt Romney? Is Mitt Romney said Barack Obama was born in Honolulu. He stands in he stands in Michigan and, and says everybody knows where I'm born. Guess who also made a joke about it? Barack Obama at the White House Correspondent Center who said, Hey. I'm going to unveil my birth video. People make jokes. Yes. It was a joke. It was right, a bad joke. Right. And you don't think that what he was trying to do was to pander to the birth no, movement. You really don't think that. Absolutely not. Okay, then we just disagree. Fair All enough. All right. Nicole, first David, then Nicole. David? Interesting, Larry, Larry, more on women's issues. Uh, Dylan writing, no more barriers except barriers to choice, birth control, opportunity, unions' rights, women's rights, and voting rights. And Angela writing, if the Democrats are pandering to the female vote with abortion and birth control, what's happening at the RNC? With all these chicks on the mic. All right, Nicole, you have a young lady from so, UCLA. So it's getting, it's hot in here. We get it. Like, some like it, huh? It's but, hot in here. But these arguments are, are getting heated, and Sarah is also undecided. Uh, who just Another won? undecided. Yeah, four of them are undecided. So who just won that? Andy? Well, um, personally, I am um, an undecided voter, right? So I'm socially liberal but um, also fiscally conservative. I do, however, believe that our federal government should not dictate who gets to marry whom, how I get to control my body. So I would say neither of you would be winning. But I agree personally. You um, heard me say anything about fiscal policy. So we haven't gone there yet. Right, no, I'm, I'm just saying that our federal government shouldn't be dictating things like whether or not I can have an abortion or who can marry whom. And so I would, I would say that neither of you would win this argument. So, okay, but, so, but Tanya makes a great point. Let's go there. So what about the economy are you undecided about? Well, first of all, um, the economy is growing at a rate of less than 2%. And while Obama has done things that have helped our economy, I think he's much more hurt the economy than helped it. And I believe that absolutely Mitt Romney has, you know, has a great tax plan. And I don't believe in the progressive tax plan. I don't think that it works. I don't think it's smart. And I'd rather see someone who has business experience controlling our economy. So what was going to tip you over? How, what, which way are you going to go with this? We, That's why she's undecided, Larry. I'm, undecided. I'm, trying, I'm trying to make her make a move. Well, what would tip me over here is if Obama were to um, create a better and smarter plan for controlling the economy. Um, I do believe that Mitt Romney, like I said, would do a better job with the economy. And I don't know if he's strong enough to take a position on social issues once so he's you're not in office. Okay, you're not even leaning. I'm not even leaning. Well, Tanya, how would you respond to? I don't understand your question because you're saying Barack Obama needs a plan going forward. You know, plan. but look, three and a half years he's had. At some point, you have to accept responsibility. So you're saying, should we judge him on the past or the future? That would be equivalent the same argument of bringing your report card home to your parents as a senior and saying, hey, you know, the past three years have been really, really bad. I'm a D student, but mom and dad, you should see me in graduate school. I'm an A student. What? Who, well, would, who would think like that? Okay, right. That's why I'm saying that Obama needs a better plan for the future if I were to no, vote for him. No, he needs to be fired. I, I do agree with Mitt Romney on ec economic issues. That's Good, what so. I'm saying. Well, part. Good, vote that way. Well, but see, I think it's really interesting <laughs> is that people are able to, like, parse through. I agree with Mitt Romney on economic issues. But what part of the economic issues? I mean, did you, maybe you, and we can, you know, I know you said that my, I'm not here to win an argument with my friend Andy. But Except you said friends. that, oh. well, I did. Because, you know what? Because that's what progressives are about. I know. We try You're to wonderful. make friends. I pretend we I'm try tough. to make Go friends. Ahead. But um, now, on a serious note, I think that when you look at, you know, when lots of people parse through the Romney Ryan budget, and who knows, sometimes Mitt Romney likes Paul Ryan's budget and sometimes he doesn't. But when people parse through that, they don't seem to like it. Older people don't. Now, maybe you're fine with no more Medicare and no more Social Security. And that's, I, I'm really, that's, I'm not being rhetorical. I mean, maybe that is just an intellectual conversation that people need, people need to have. But I think that when they talk about this president's record of job growth, uh, jobs have been growing at a greater rate than they were at any point during the Bush presidency. Uh, and I, I think that also, 
you know, I, I, I agree with folks who suggest that the president is the president and he has to take responsibility for where we are as a nation. That being said, people want to act like he inherited, you know, an amusement park when okay. what he inherited I'll was agree. a burning Can I grant factory? you that argument? But Ronald Reagan inherited a worse economy from Jimmy Carter with higher inflation. And by his third year, there was 6% growth. Why? Yeah, he, he cut taxes. He, had, he, he cut regulation. He, he freed small business. And then he raised taxes. By the way, well, taxes. just a reminder. Aura TV, you're watching Larry King on Aura TV, coming to you via YouTube and Aura TV with our special coverage following the Republican convention tonight. We'll do the same tomorrow night following the Romney acceptance speech. Paul Ryan said tonight his administration is going to create 12 million jobs. But he wasn't specific as to how. Mm -hmm. How? Well, look, what Paul Ryan's going to do is he's going to create, and this is what Republicans understand, government does not create jobs. People create jobs. So you let the people do their thing, small business. And the way that you do that is you stop strangling them with high taxation, high regulation, and then business will grow. It, it's really not complicated. And if you open up any textbook, our students will understand to the 20th century, where they raise taxes and higher regulation throughout the history of time, whether it's Chairman Mao's China or the Soviet Union or Cuba, it never works. It's not complicated. And it's very simple. Open, and if you open any textbook or look at any history book, you will see that notwithstanding a lot of these right-wing sound bites about government never doing anything, government has often, not always, but government has often played a significant role in economic development. The federal government, the big government that you all love to hate, subsidized the oil industry when it was really expensive to explore for oil. When it was really expensive to get oil, like back in the day, oil would have cost $500 a, bar a barrel. The federal government helped subsidize that industry. So I know that like everybody likes to pretend there are no subsidies. We're all just up from our bootstraps. But to understand it's not true. the problem it's with subsidies, the great thing about the marketplace is that the market decides who wins, who loses. When you buy a house, all the, everybody gets together and they say, hey, what's it worth? But when there's subsidies and there's a larger government, it's the politicians that decide who gets are, it and who does Are you against it. all subsidies? We subsidize farming. We well, pay farmers I, I, I not to grow If things. you look at Republicans, they're more against subsidies than liberals are. So I'm against all we, subsidies, so sure. All subsidies. Yeah, so well, the federal yeah. government should not have subsidized oil when oil exploration was risky and dangerous and expensive. There I don't were remember not, such a thing. Because I know, because we were not born then. But the funny thing is, Andy, there was a history in the United States before you and I were born. Things happened before we were born. Really? And once that upon, it's true. All right, back, it's to, true. back to Nicole. Yeah, so my question for you, Andy, then, is how can um, Romney want to cut most federal bureaucracies by 57% without raising any taxes? How is that going to work sure. out? So well, the way well, Romney's plan is to reduce taxes by 20% on everybody, but wealthy people will be paying a similar rate, not a similar rate, excuse me, a similar amount because you get rid of deductions and all these games. See, the nice thing about Republicans is, in a perfect world, we prefer a flat tax or a fair tax. Everybody pays the same rate, but Democrats insist on a progressive tax. So we're saying, okay, if there's a progressive tax, let's get rid of all the deductions, this 4,000-page tax code. It's insane, and I always laugh. You look at liberals and they say, oh, well, Ron, these gaming his taxes, release his tax records. Who's protecting the status quo? Obama's protecting the current tax system, and Romney's saying we need to change the tax system. So why not system. release the tax records? His father released 20 years. Well, look, John McCain released two years. That was a principle back then. But is it, what's the principle? You know, I think this is the issue, is that I think he would release it, but the media doesn't take into account that Romney gives 10 to 15 percent of his money to charity. So show so, him your taxes. Well, I agree, but they report 14 percent, and that creeps people out when, in fact, he gives money to charity, which reduces his federal rate. Look, I mean... It doesn't reduce his federal rate. It's it what does. he chooses to do. It's what he... If he gives money... It, it if reduces he, if his he federal rate. Okay. There's a, there, is a, there is a deduction for charitable contributions, fair enough. And there's no reason why he can't say, like everybody else says, like ministers, all sorts of people who are uh, in situations where people want to know how much money they're bringing in, say what you're giving out. I mean, fine. That's and he great does. He, gives to, so he made why $42 he million the, the past two years, and he why gave over he $7 million to charity. Returns? He should. Why is he hiding them? I don't think it's because he's afraid of how the media interprets it. And you agree the media is liberal. So is Hollywood. No, I, actually, I never said that. I well, never you, said that. You should. Right. No, I shouldn't. David? That's another great soundbite that you guys have for shutting down arguments that you don't like. Our other <laughs> side is still there, but David liberal. wants to interject. Larry, more and more tweets coming in, again, about gay rights. Derek Clifton asking for your panelists, can anyone answer me this? How can any gay person rationalize voting Republican in this election? That is not a question for me. How's that a question for me? You're not yeah. a Republican. Well, look, I, I mean... Well, you're asking gays to vote for you, right? Look, this is the issue. Is that when you get younger people, and these are all the people on Twitter or whatever, the social issues when you're 18, 19 years old, the most important thing in the world. I agree 
These are losing issues when it comes to an 18 or 19 year old. But what I would ask this individual is do you want to have a job or do you want to be like Spain or Greece in the next 10 years? Yes, and, then, and that's an important thing. I mean, if he's got rich parents, he probably doesn't care. Because those are the options. Either you yes. can support discrimination against gay people or you will be an, eco an economic disaster like Greece or Spain. Those are false choices. That is not. Th well, you those keep are saying not discrimination. Those Nobody's not, in favor of discrimination. Yes, you're in favor of saying that, that gay people don't have the same rights to marry. Not you, but your platform, your party, has embraced a platform that and says both, that gay people do not have the same rights as heterosexual people. That is discrimination. Nicole, I know you guys don't like it, but that's what Nicole it is. Nicole has a new person. The, the president of the college Republicans wants to ask uh -huh. this question. The UCLA uh -huh. Republicans. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Cool. Um, thank you very much. Now, going back to, um, we're on gay rights still, I believe. Now, one opinion that we have within our club at UCLA is actually the idea of government being withdrawn altogether from marriage and looking at every union as a civil union and le leaving marriage to religious institutions, whether it be synagogues, churches, or things like that. Do we ever see the Republican Party evolving into anything like that, or will we see this just traditional marriage ideology dominate over the next yeah, 20 years? Yeah, there are some who say, why not make marriage a religious issue, let the churches, the synagogues, whatever, perform it, mm -hmm. and the state be involved in a civil union? Well, why I, is marriage a state issue? I, I think that in the next 20 to 30 years, I mean, this is what, social issues like these are going to be they're, they're not going to be at the forefront of the Republican Party. I think younger people think differently. I mean, I just think that's a reality. Also, it's not a national issue, is it, Tony? No, it's not a national issue. I mean, I do think that there are people who've made it a national issue uh, with the Federal Defense of Marriage Act. But, you know, frankly, I think it would be a huge step forward for the Republican Party, not that they care what I think, if they started to take these social issues off the table and said, let's just have a hard conversation about numbers and math and how to move us forward. So I we, think we, we love that conversation, but if you use this as a case study, I bet about 70% or 80% of the time was spent on social issues. You just, cause that's I, I, you I just, it's, it's just interesting. I mean, we dominate when it comes to the economy and national security. No, you don't dominate. But I feel like we're neither one of you are asking, answering the question of do you think that would be a possibility or would that be something he that you said would favor that for the Republican Party? Yeah. He said in the idea years. of making civil unions. We got it. We're beyond that. Next question. What? Yeah, <laughs> he said, sir. Hey, I, I'm the moderator. Oh, that's right. You got it, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. College Republican, I'm going to try to accord you a little more respect than my <laughs> Republican colleague. I hope that your party gets to do what you're trying to do. David. Thank you. Thank you. More about Social media, we of course are broadcasting live on YouTube. President, we are. President Obama today did a Reddit where he said, ask me anything. First president in history to do that. Mitt Romney's campaign today uh, purchased a trending topic on Twitter. Do you think Romney could benefit more uh, and gain more young votes if he were to do something similar By the way, to what the I president did? That did? You about did a it. month ago. You did? I did two hours. It's very, I think Romney should do it. I think, I, I think every figure in the public eye should. Have you ever done it? What, read it? Uh, no, ask anything. No, People, I haven't. Try it. It's okay. a lot, you should do it. I think I'm going to do it. It's, a, it's really I'm fun. One side. I'm going to do it. Do you think he can benefit Andy? Why not? He's got two hours. Sure. Yeah, why not? Can't hurt. He can find two hours. Yeah, he'd find two hours. We'll but do you think two. there's a benefit? You seem dismissive of kind of the audience yeah, look, on I Twitter. Look, I mean, it's important. And any time I mean, you can reach voters, it's important. Right. But one, a couple of other quick things. Should faith be an issue? No. Yeah, not a huge one. It, you, a minor one? No. I mean, look. Romney's a guy of faith. That's just the reality. I don't think that should count, you know, against him. Can I just interject or one thing? Him. Can, or whatever. Yeah, I, I, whatever. I, I, do <laughs> think, I do think that what we're seeing is a bit of a double standard. I mean, obviously, you know, we ask all kinds of questions of Barack Obama and the church that he went to. And look, you know, I think that Mitt Romney is a man of faith. His father was somebody who supported civil rights. I, I think knew his father. Fair, I interviewed his father. It is very fair to ask him about the church, the position of the Mormon church on... Whoa, uh, on, whoa, on, whoa. Wait, This is wait, a losing wait, issue you for you. Even, I'm not trying to win an issue. He asked me if faith is important. And if somebody wants to be my president... And he belongs to a church that believed until, like, I was born that black people didn't deserve to get the priesthood. I just want an answer. They okay. said, gotcha. I First just want of all, an answer. Jeremiah Wright, I, just if, want I suggest you guys YouTube Jeremiah Wright. It is the most entertaining and shocking stuff. Right. He says, not God bless America, goddamn America. And September 11th was our fault. Obama was part of this church for 20 years. I mean, okay. that's and a disqualification. I, said, I mean, that's and crazy. People ask, and people ask and people appropriately ask Barack Obama about his So they position. can ask whatever they we, want about the Mormon church. people ask Barack Obama about his position on that issue. I just want to make sure that Mitt Romney never agreed with that position on his, in his church that said that, uh, African, Romney, that said that African American people were not entitled to the priesthood. I would think he would disagree with that. I just want to hear it. By the way, his father vehemently disagreed with that. 
man. He's he is right. a good man. They're well, we're going to have man. David Rubin come back in a couple minutes before we wind things up. Uh, you want to add something now, David? Uh, more so about the president today. Do you think, in particularly on women's issues, uh, one person wrote, do you think it will help and be more beneficial, and will people be more impressed with Michelle Obama than they were with Ann Romney? Is Michelle going to speak? Do we know? Is she on Good the... Good question. Is she on the... Oh, dance? she'll speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you they're think both, it's a battle both, of the, no, of the both first nice ladies? People. They're both wonderful people. I mean, it's really attacking somebody's wife is just like crazy. Yeah, except the right does it all the time. I mean, they've scored a lot of points trying to make they Michelle Obama. Michelle. Yes, they did. They On scored a issue? lot of points what? trying to say she was an angry black woman, pulling out her thesis, trying to cobble together all of these, you know, pieces of things that she wrote or said or didn't say or may have thought. And I do think that perspective is out there. I think it fell flat because people know that it's not true. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think that she's a great supporter for her husband in the same way that Ann Romney is a great supporter for hers. I just think nobody subscribes to these, like, conspiracy theories that you have that were, like, out to get Michelle Obama as an angry woman. I mean, that's just insane. You guys just like to She's a nice thing. woman. You guys Ann like Romney's forget, nice. You like it's a, it's an even argument. Let me ask Nicole a question. Ago. Nicole's the economist. Yeah, leave, leave Ann alone. I think it's like, no, leave no, Bernie alone. I think, leave but alone that's too. what a lot of these students are saying. There's a lot of diversions. Is, is the economy the chief issue, do you think? Absolutely. You're the economist. I, I think there are three chief issues. I think number one is jobs, and number two is jobs, and number three is jobs. Absolutely. Well, I then think, why isn't Romney I think the market, way ahead? Why isn't Oak Romney? What? Why isn't Romney way ahead if jobs is the central issue? And we're failing in jobs. Well, I think a lot of people are looking to the markets right now to react, and I think a lot of uh, a lot of economists are using the GDP issue, which one of the students brought up. And also, you can read the jobless rate a couple of different ways. It's 8%. It's been 8%, above 8% for the last four years. Uh, but we are adding jobs. Four million jobs have been added. And there are different sectors that are adding jobs why as well. The, the stock unemployment market, wait why is, is the stock 15%. market so healthy? If the economy's but bad. But nobody's trading in the stock market right now. So the stock market is healthy, but the VIX is like in the you know what are right now. So th there's not a lot of action going on in the stock market. It's not necessarily a good litmus test for the economy, but you can look at a myriad of different things uh, as the health of the economy. And I think uh, both uh, Romney and Obama are using the statistics to their favor. Before we wind things up, you want to answer? I answer your question quickly. Why, if it's about jobs, is Obama still leading? It's because he's cooler, and there's a huge factor to his personality. Romney's not a great communicator, and it's a challenge. I worry be, about I think it, Obama may win this because of the pure communication. Yeah, is the debate cool. going to be a problem? He is. He's cool. He's right. yeah. he's Before cool. we wind things up, one reminder. I'll, I'll remind you again at the end, though. But we are going to continue the conversation on Google+. Plus, So you can keep watching us on YouTube or head over to our Google+, Plus page, google.com, plus Aura TV. All right. Is Mr. Rubin back? Where is he? He, is he in, making an entrance? He has returned. I have returned, Larry. I you want know. some closing comments, Mr. Rubin. What is your assessment of well, this I, past off, 65 I wanna, minutes? I want to apologize for that whole sweating thing, but I wish <laughs> that I had been out here for some of this LGBT stuff because I just got an incredible sponge bath from Marcus Bachman back there, so <laughs> that was excellent. And uh, to our Republican friend over here who keeps saying related to the gay issues, that, oh, well, 20 or 30 years, everything will be okay in 20 or 30 years, that's the answer. I mean, you had a log cabin Republican who could not tell you that he would vote for their candidate. So, I mean... He said he will vote for their candidate. Yeah, but it's very clear that they're heavy. sort of in there or they, get, they let them bring their little disco ball keychain uh, you know, to the party. But I think we get we get what's going on. What's uh, your assessment? How's this race going to come out, do you think? I think it's going to come down to the last couple days. I really do. I think I have to believe that some decent thought will win in America and Obama will be all right. Well, I you're mean, supporting Obama. I'm supporting Obama. I mean, you want to pick on him? Well, I believe that women should control their bodies. I believe that gay people should be allowed to marry who they want to marry. I believe that. I don't believe he's trying to destroy the economy or that but he's But the president Muslim. can't really affect abortion, can he? So well, the Supreme the Court is going to change it or leave it? Well, the president can affect things just by saying things. I mean, well, look, by, just said, by saying he was for gay rights, I mean, think about all the good that did for every 15-year-old gay kid in a school. So, you know, that in and of itself, the president saying something, it not, it's not always just about policy. And yes, he has had some trouble pushing some right. policy. Before we but wind things up, I want to each uh, a quick opinion on assessment of this evening. Your assessment, David. 
I think the biggest thing we heard from people, and Andy, you mentioned it has to do with social uh, issues when it comes to social media. That may be the case. Most of what we heard today, relative to what you said, had to do with gay issues, women's rights, uh, not a lot about the economy. We didn't hear a lot about the economy from young people. We heard more about the social issues, and I expect we'll hear that into the DNC. And we'll do it again tomorrow. Nicole, your assessment. Uh, Condi 2016. That's it. What? I, th I think Condi 2016, I think a lot of the students here were really blown away by Condoleezza Rice. Not blown away by many other folks. Is okay. that the consensus, guys? Yeah. Your assessment, Andy? Uh, about tonight. Sum it up. Well, look, in general, this is a big decision. And I think young people, you know, when it comes to social issues, I understand where you're coming from. But if you look at the next four years, this country literally can't afford four more years of Barack Obama. I mean, the money just isn't there. And we've never suffered through massive inflation or high interest rates. But study South America. I mean, it's coming. We're not immune to it. We're not better in it. It's just a fact of fiscal reality. And if somebody doesn't change this path, you guys are all going to be unemployed. You're going to face high taxes. And all that money you're paying to Social Security and Medicare won't be there. So your choice is November 6th. Tanya? I think that I would welcome a conversation, a policy conversation in this country where we're talking about realistic things, what government really should do and what it shouldn't do, as opposed to this Republican fairy tale that suggests that everybody, nobody's ever done anything with any government help. It's foolish, it's phony, and it's not fair to the American people to, to, to have that conversation. Some thank yous. I want to thank Barbara Ben Susan, a UCLA senior in political science, Darby Bukowski, a UCLA senior as well in political science. Sophia Campos, a UCLA graduate in political science. Michael Esfadani, UCLA a senior as well in political science. They're all seniors in political science. Cecilia Herrera, Ryan Krebs, uh, Antonio Tony Mastria, uh, Kenneth Morales, Elizabeth Murphy, Sarah Murphy, Darren Romalo, and Sina Safadi. They'll all be back tomorrow night. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way to our YouTube page for the latest updates, go to youtube.com slash Aura TV. You can follow us on Twitter at Aura Politics. We're going to continue the conversation. You can stay with us on Google Plus. You can keep watching us on YouTube or head over to our Google Plus page, google.com plus Aura TV. We'll be back again tomorrow night. We'll be back with the Democratic Convention as well, with all four debates and election night. I'm Larry King for our panel, our students, and all of the people here uh, gathered tonight on this evening. Thank you very much for joining us, and stay with us for Google+. Plus. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
Um, I, and I don't know, it didn't really resonate with me. Um, part of that's just that I'm inclined to support Obama uh, in the first place. But I, he, there were just not a whole lot of specifics as to how specifically um, he would turn around the economy. And he didn't really, uh, he spoke in the, com the same combative tone that I think turned off so many Dove, you, you, you know, millennials, um, turned them on to Obama's message of, you know, hope and change and kind of rising above the standard political fray in the first place. So. Okay. By the way, I forgot to mention, I want to thank Laura, Elizabeth Watson, James Wren, and Mary Zakakian. They'll all be back tomorrow night, too. I forgot to include them. Now what do we do? We take questions? How does this work, guys? We just hang out. We, oh, we just hang out? <laughs> yeah, we talk about politics. Okay, we'll just keep going. I'm sweating. <laughs> this is more relaxed now. If we can be more relaxed. I feel my cold coming back, but I'm hanging tough. You know why? Because I'm a pro. I'm a professional. <laughs> That's what this is about. There we go. Okay. Hang out. There we go. Okay. Okay, Nicole. Let's go back to you with the kids. Kids, what? Anybody want to say something? Anybody want to comment? All right, back there. We didn't hear from that gentleman right there. What's your name? Hi. I also agree with Nicole. Uh, I really liked Condoleezza Rice's speech, particularly when she was talking about how circumstances don't control us, and how uh, partic particularly, you know, it's not where we come from, it's where we are going. And that, that really resonated with me, and I was personally vetting for her to be uh, Mitt Romney's vice presidential uh, choice, uh, because I think that she, she does a better job appealing to independent voters, uh, African Americans, uh, women voters, and I don't think that Paul Ryan uh, could really bring in any more voters that Romney didn't already have prior to choosing uh, Paul Ryan. Andy, had he picked Condoleezza, while it would have brought up the Bush administration and maybe the Iraq war, there would have been a lot of pluses to that ticket, wouldn't there? No, look, it's a, a very strong pick. She's a very strong woman. She could run for president of the United States. I think it, look, he had a, a good decision to make amongst a bunch of great choices. And Paul Ryan was a decision because he wanted to focus on the economy. <coughs> Condoleezza Rice is Secretary of State. That's an international type of thing. So there's no doubt she could be in the cabinet. But maybe for Vice President, he wanted to say, hey, the focus is on jobs, and I want to focus there. You think he'd bring her back to government? If yeah, absolutely. Alive? If she'd you want know, to. A lot of young people are also asking, why isn't there another party? Why isn't there a fiscally conservative and socially liberal party? They're figuring out... Who do we vote for? Because a lot of them feel that way, so they're a little bit torn over social issues or economic issues. You want to chime in, David? Third party, Larry? Do you want to, <laughs> you want to put your hat in the well, ring? I, I don't know why we have two parties, by the way. Why isn't that th third party? You know, I remember you know, I was partially responsible for Ross Perot. Uh, Perot, had he stayed in, might have won. Mm -hmm. People forget that. He was ahead. Yeah. When he quit, he... he, he he hit a chord, and I don't know why we're a two. Why are we a two-party system? Why aren't we three parties? I, 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 it's, it's, why? You know, I, I think it's one of those things. Not that in the, the Constitution. It's not in the Constitution, but you do have these party structures. You know, this primary mechanism that sucks in all the money, and what, what we're seeing right now really is how money controls this process. And as hard as it was before. Uh, the Supreme Court decision in Citizens United for independent candidacies to attract attention and to get money, it's going to be even harder now. And I think that everybody, you know, people who participate in the system want to back somebody who they think can win. And because not since Perot, we haven't really seen a mechanism or any institutional support for somebody who's running outside of the two-party system. And I do think it's unfortunate. Larry, you know, I think there will be. You brought up the Perot point. I remember watching him on your show. And if he hadn't dropped out with that whole wedding FBI thing, he certainly could have won. I think it takes a charismatic person with a lot of money who's going to be economically conservative and socially liberal. I think that's an absolute possibility. David? Uh, Dan, both Davids. We're just getting a text right now that I was actually looking at uh, from someone who said tonight's convention, the 2012 RNC, is much more immigrant friendly than the 2008 RNC. Really? Do you guys agree? I mean, I've always found the part, I mean, the party's not anti-immigrant, so, but you're right, they made a more of a showcasing, I would say. Yes, uh, today there were six uh, or yesterday, six individuals who are minorities that spoke. The other David? Well, if I just speak to the two-party <laughs> system, I mean, we had or have or sort of have Ron Paul, and he still exists. They and about, he they was the even guy. Be nominated. Well, he was the guy. He wasn't going to be nominated and isn't going to be nominated, obviously, as a Republican. But if he had been more socially liberal, 
then he's doing exactly what everyone here is asking. He's giving you the fiscal conservatism and the low taxes and states' rights and all that stuff that the Republicans love, but he's not socially uh, he's not socially open. He's not for gay rights, abortion, etc. You guys agree that if uh, if Bill Clinton were running, he'd win? Oh, I think you know it's interesting how I'm. I'm sorry, I can't resist this pot. So dynamic really personality. Uh, you know, the, the, they're hiding their last president, but the Democrats. We will trot out Bill Clinton every chance. We not get. Jimmy Carter. No, I said our <laughs> last president, not the last <laughs> okay. last. Um, but I do think, you know, I don't know if he'd win again, but I do think that he uh, retains a lot of popularity with people who helped to decide elections. You know, what's interesting, Larry, is that this young man said that Obama won his vote because of his Al Green rendition. I is that said, right? No, I said Romney lost my vote because of his terrible God Bless America rendition. Is that a joke? <laughs> no, he didn't um, say he sang America the Beautiful, right? Oh, America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. What I was trying to say is for that... spacious Wait, let, let Larry, can Larry hey. win your vote? Oh. For amber <laughs> waves of green. <laughs> right. Keep going. No, I'll go ahead. Did, did, wh right, well, he well, could carry a tune. Well, he'll get my vote. Larry 2016. <laughs> What I was trying to say is that uh, we were speaking earlier about just the reliability of Romney's comments and how he flip-flops, and I was just saying how he's, he just seems like such a typical politician with his uh, rendition of, I guess it was America the Beautiful, uh, a few days after uh, Barack Obama sang that Al Green verse, and uh, she was saying how, oh yeah, the type of politician that will go and kiss babies, that will sing these things, and he just seems to pander to the public to gain votes in any way that he can. By the so way, what do you want him to break down? Like, <laughs> I, I what do you want, want from his I, I want him to be straight with us and tell us the facts. By the way, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of dispatch here. Obama is personally likable. Right? I think 60 percent, 65 percent. Yeah, yeah. Is that an edge? 65 to 66%. When they go into the booth? Is that a, it's an absolute edge. And I would say, though, that that's not always a bad thing, because even Abe Lincoln had to do the whole, you know, it's better that the politician of power is kissing up to the people. I mean, that's the concept of democracy, the people have the power, as opposed to anywhere else in the world where, you know, everybody's in awe and has to, you know, suck up to Kim Jong-il or now his, his son. So I think it's a better system. It's not perfect. Yeah. So Interesting. Yeah. Go ahead. So often we hear that since Ronald Reagan, Republicans have moved farther and farther to the right. Do you think, especially Tanya, that Republicans and some of them are at a breaking point and in 20, you know, in the next, in the next presidential cycle, we will see Republicans who are young at this point and are getting older who will walk it back a little bit more toward the middle? I, I hope so because, you know, look, I agree that all of these social issues are great political points for Democrats, but I don't think it's good for the country. I don't think it's good for America to be talking about what happens to a pregnant woman who's raped and does it shut that down? Like, I just, I don't think that's healthy for the, for the country. So I, I actually do think that, you know, uh, our social mores evolve. A few years ago, 30 years ago, uh, my relationship, I'm in an interracial relationship, my relationship would have been illegal in some states, and now it's not. So I, I think that we're actually on the upswing. I think that there are still these, you know, uh, out let liars who I don't think are just on the fringe. You know, I think that they're controlling some parts of our national conversation, but I think that they're getting smaller and smaller. And so I look forward to the day when we're no longer talking about who gets the civil right of marriage or, you know, what a woman can do with her body. I look forward to that moment. Are all the students at UCLA talking a lot about the campaign to, or hasn't sorry. it driven up yet? I think uh, we're political science students, so of course that's always being talked about. What about in every on campus, class. though? On campus, it wasn't like it was in the last election. No. No? No, it wasn't. And I think that has a lot to do with how Obama's been campaigning, to be honest. I don't think he's charging us up like he did in the past. And especially, it was my first time voting, and it was a very powerful and moving <coughs> thing for me to be voting for a president that I truly believed would take me to a path that I wanted to go, especially as a college student entering college. Um, yeah, it's, it's been hard. I don't think it's been really talked about as much. I, 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 um, I was really involved in the 2008 elections as well for Obama, and I can totally identify with you in terms of being disillusioned. But the fact that so many folks are making these social issues on the national forefront and they are attacking women's rights, they're attacking immigrant rights, they're attacking LGBT rights, that fires me up personally and with my community, right? And I'm going to make sure that everybody goes out there and votes because, yes, jobs are very important, but if I don't feel safe, if I don't feel secure in my own home, right, in my own body, then that's a really, really big problem, and I'd rather have those civil liberties 
please any day um, than have you know a job in five years I'm gonna make my own jobs I'm gonna make my own businesses and make sure that that's created but I need to make sure that I feel safe in my own body that my LGBT brothers and sisters also have the right to marry and that I will have a pathway to citizenship one day and that is just not the reality with the Romney Ryan plan right now I, I think that you know what's interesting is that when you look back at 2008 I mean there were a lot of things firing up Democrats uh, at the time, it was really exciting to see uh, an African American and a woman um, who were both neck and neck. I mean, this was—it was history. I mean, I, I spent election night with a rabid right winger who, when Obama won, he hasn't liked anything that he said since then. But you know, it was a—it's a good moment for the country, and yeah. I know that you know it, it was—it's—it's it's a great historical yeah, moment. Everybody agrees with everybody that. Everybody agrees with that. Um, I think that you know some of the maybe there were some higher expectations there. I I haven't agreed with everything that Obama um, has done. I think that he uh, his decision to go after medical marijuana and, and uh, on, in, on the state level is or at least to uh, continue federal enforcement of it is a problem. 